Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Well, isn't that interesting? As this entire case was falling apart clearly, not reaching the basic standard of evidence to actually get an indictment, as the grand jury was sent home for a week and then supposedly was going to be sent home for a month to take a break and focus on another case, magically, overnight, Alvin Bragg somehow secures an indictment targeting former President Donald Trump. Now, we have been reporting on this entire thing, every single little update, and the conclusion that most people were reaching on this case was that it wasn't going anywhere. In fact, it seemed like it was headed straight into the ground, into the dirt. But even though I was reporting that, I kept adding this caveat that you never know, I mean, it is New York, they could indict anyways, and that's exactly what's happening. It seems as though despite the evidence, despite the weak case being built on a convicted criminal perjurer, somehow the grand jury has decided to indict Donald Trump. Folks, there's only one way to say it and excuse my language, shit's about to hit the fan. Let's have a conversation, we got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. Well, if we have learned anything from this series of events, it's two things. Firstly, the American American justice system is a complete sham. Well, I guess basically anywhere where there's a Soros DA. And secondly, it's that you probably shouldn't speak too soon. Just yesterday, this article dropped. Donald Trump drops big news after latest development with Manhattan Grand Jury. Quote, former President Donald Trump made a U-turn this week after slamming the Manhattan Grand Jury investigating a hush money payment, which was made to adult film star Stormy Daniels. Quote, I have gained such respect for this grand jury, perhaps even the grand jury system as a whole, Trump said in a statement on Truth Social on Wednesday. Well, never speak too early, because here we go. Manhattan District Attorney issues statement confirming Donald Trump indictment. Here's the statement from Alvin Bragg's office. Statement attributable to a spokesperson. This evening, we contacted Mr. Trump's attorney to coordinate his surrender to the Manhattan DA's office for arraignment on a Supreme Court indictment, which remains under seal. Guidance will be provided when the arraignment date is selected. I can't, but also can believe that this is actually happening. It comes as a major surprise considering the report from just yesterday that the grand jury was being told to take a 30-day break and that they might be called in to hear evidence on a separate issue entirely. Well, apparently that separate issue, or the speculation is, that New York City District Attorney Alvin Bragg is now expanding his Trump inquiry to include the alleged payoff to a Playboy model. The whole Karen McDougal issue. District Attorney Alvin Bragg has officially crossed the Rubicon. He is causing irreparable damage to the American justice system and the American election system. It's a continuation from 2016 all the way till now. The corrupt Democrat establishment and frankly, in conjunction with the Uniparty establishment, will stop at nothing, and I mean nothing, to get their way. I mean, just think about the obvious comparison. DNC, Clinton campaign, agreed to steal dossier funding fine. Hillary Clinton's campaign paid foreign spies to fabricate dirt on Donald Trump so they could impeach him from office. From what I remember, she received an $8,000 fine. The Democrats got a phony warrant to illegally spy on President Trump, which led to a two-year-long investigation and a failed impeachment attempt. Then in 2020, they used the entire leftist media apparatus to write fake stories on Donald Trump for an entire year. They colluded with the FBI to censor the Hunter Biden laptop story drop, plus a whole lot more. In 2022, they leaked a Supreme Court draft, raided Donald Trump's home ahead of the election, while protecting Joe Biden from the exact same investigation when they literally knew that he was in position possession of classified documents. And now in 2024, they're trying to indict Donald Trump, the former president of the United States, and Joe Biden's election opponent on bogus felony charges. It's absolutely unreal. They have no case, at least logically, legally, they shouldn't have a case, yet they secure this grand jury indictment regardless. Based on a known liar's testimony, and not only is the case built on a liar like Michael Cohen, but his testimony was filled with lies as well. There's a literal document from Michael Cohen legal team, which contradicts the claims that he makes in his testimony. Not to mention, even if Michael Cohen's testimony was actually accurate, it still isn't a federal elections crime, because the payment itself was a personal expenditure, not a campaign expense. 
We'll have to see what happens here. The indictment is currently under seal, but we're getting a report or a leak to CNN that President Trump is apparently being hit with 34 counts related to business fraud. Former President Donald Trump now faces more than 30 counts related to business fraud in an indictment from a Manhattan grand jury, according to two familiar sources with the case. Robert Costa from CBS News reports, Sources familiar with the investigation tell CBS Tonight that Bragg has some documents that have been uncovered during the probe but are not yet known to the public slash been reported. Both financial records and communications between key figures will use these as well as testimony. I mean, they better have something absolutely undeniable, something rock solid. Chuck Schumer just released a statement claiming that Donald Trump is subject to the same laws as every American. But we'll have to see now, won't we? There better be something significant, something previously unreported or unknown, because if Donald Donald Trump is being indicted on a felony for a simple hush money payment, an NDA, to protect his family and his personal public image, well then no, Donald Trump is not subject to the same laws as every other American. Donald Trump is being illegitimately persecuted. Meanwhile, people like Hillary Clinton and Hunter Biden get off scot-free. The Democrat Party is officially going there. You know, they're going to claim, oh, this has nothing to do with the Democrats. This is just the legal system doing what it does honestly. No, this is a Democrat establishment-led election tactic. They're actually going there. They're attempting to criminally indict a former sitting president. I don't know how Democrats think this is going to play out in their favor. I mean, we have covered public sentiment on this issue. I think the Republican base is going to rally around Donald Trump like never before. We've even seen Democrats joining in, defending Donald Trump from this ridiculous politicization, weaponization of the legal system. I get the blue anon crowd is cheering on Twitter, but I think the rest of the country is looking at this in a state of shock. Horrified by the implication, the Democrats have gone too far, and I think people are realizing that. You know, the Brian Krasensteins of the world, the Rob Reiners of the world, the Stephen Kings and the Robert Reichs are claiming that this is a vital moment to restore American democracy. They're celebrating it as a win, but again, they better have something serious, something real, something undeniable, or something concrete. Otherwise, it's gonna blow up in their face. I mean, if Ben Shapiro is actively standing with Donald Trump, if Geraldo Rivera all of a sudden is defending Donald Trump as well, claiming that he's with Professor Alan Dershowitz right now, and he's telling him that this stretches criminal statutes beyond any plausible constitutional boundaries, if Geraldo Rivera is claiming that he's right and this sucks, this anti-Trump witch hunt might end up unifying never-Trumpers, independents, and even moderate Democrats together, as more and more people wake up to these clear abuses of power. I don't know, we'll have to see as this thing is unsealed. They're claiming that they're indicting him on 34 different counts. Let's see what those counts are, and we'll be able to analyze further. That's what I got for you guys on this one, that's the update. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.